So what we're looking at here is a step-by-step -step process on how I went about turning 700 of these little bowls. I've broken it down the best I can into their little segments and steps that I went about doing it. And this video has been requested by numerous people. Um, there's a few things that I wanna highlight as I go through. The main one being when it comes to sanding the back, I'm not gonna put the dust collector on and everything, I'm just gonna show you just a visual guide when it comes to sanding and when it comes to the end on uh, hogging the timber out from the inside of these little bowls. There's two ways that I want to show you there as well because one way might suit you, the other way might be a little bit easier. So two ways of doing that. But the first thing that I want to show you is how to actually break these boards down. I've got these little templates here just to get a rough block. Let's head over to the bandsaw and I'll show you how I go about doing that. So first things first is I mark up the waste on the board so where there's any faults and I found a lot of the faults come from right trying to squeeze a bowl right out to that sapwood area and I first start by whopping the board down straight down the guts so I'll show you how I do that. So, most of the time, I just leave them square like that. It's a bit of a waste of time to remove all that corner. I can do that on the lathe within a matter of seconds with a couple of passes with the gouge. Rightio, so we're over at the drill press now, and this is a 50 mil Forstner bit, and I use the little spur, I'll get down to show, so I use this little spur under here to just identify where the center is, where I need to get it smack bang in where I made that little mark with the template earlier on. So one thing that I wanna quickly mention before I just drill this hole is now that I'm making a mortise with this force in a bit to go on the VM90 chuck, the Vicmark chuck with the dovetail doors, uh, jaws, excuse me, they will expand with inside the mortise. When you are chopping your blanks up, I always, apologies, I always look for faults that the little cracks might be running up and down like this, but when you expand those jaws, inside the dovetail jaws inside the mortise and separate that timber apart it can become very vulnerable to splitting apart and flying across your workshop so just i always be super vigilant and make sure i haven't got any cracks running down into the blank because they can and will don't ask me how i know they can and will break apart and send pieces hurling everywhere so super careful with that Rightio, so let's go ahead and drill some of these mortises just identify where that mark is. Put it straight down. And there's one. Identify where that little hole is, make sure we're center. And there's two. And the depth that I've gone down, no doubt someone will want to know, that is uh, 10 mil in depth that I've gone down for that little mortise. So now we're ready to go. Now, we're going to move into the next stage, making it round, forming a tenon, and then shaping up the back. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna feed that mortise onto, onto the jaws like so. And as I said before, any splits, you want to eliminate them early on in the game because they will come back to haunt you, especially when you're expanding those jaws in there and it could possibly come flying off. I'm just going to lubricate that. So from there, we bring over the banjo and now I'm ready to rock and roll. Make sure we've got a bit of clearance there. And the first thing that I'm going to do is take the corners off that piece there 
with a couple of swaps of a 19 mil bowl gouge. I'm gonna give uh, Dad's gouge a run. So I bring up the speed and I don't force the gouge in and I take little swipes because I don't want that bowl come flying off. So just little, little swipes. I am turning left-handed, so I'm just guiding that gouge across. Bit more speed. I've got the tool down low. I learnt this from Glenn Lucas. And my hand's in my pocket, and the handle goes there. So that's how I know I've got the tool in the right position. And I'm just guiding it across. I'm not forcing it at all. I'll leave it there. I don't need to cut it perfectly circular because that's just more time on that steel that it doesn't need. Even though that is my bulk removing tool, I don't want to have to waste time. So that's roughly, roughly round. It's still got flat spots, obviously. And now we're going to mark up and form, form the tenon like this. So let's do that. So I've got my dividers here. And one thing a lot of people have uh, asked me how I set the dividers. And you might see uh, Richard Raffin turns a lot of bowls like this. How I go about doing it is you eye up the inside of the chuck and that's closed. Open it up by maybe a half turn and then set your dividers there. And when it comes to sanding, I just want to show you not to be too aggressive on your tenon when it comes to sanding. So you need a really sharp gouge or skew chisel to, to form your tenon. So like I said, closed, half turn open, set your dividers so they're ready to go. And your dividers will create a perfectly centered, accurate sized tenon on the back of your bowl. Or when you're shaping up to create a mortise on platters and things. So, as we all know, left side touches, right side shadows. So I'm just going to make a mark. That's way off. So I need to go back to the left because it's on the inside of the right hand marker. So I'll make one that's going to be on the outside. So I need to go to the right of that side. And there we're bang on there. Apologies, made a few marks now. So that's our mortise there. Sorry, that's our tenon there. To form up that tenon, and I'll show you how I cut it. So press in. Just before I reach that tenon, I pull back like that, and then I come over and eye up, make sure I've got about a five to six mil tenon. Then I go to a really sharp tool, this is M42 steel, the GL5. And then I hold the tool in my side, over grass grip, find my line, and then drive the tool, I drive the tool straight in. Like so, and then come across the back, pinky behind so the tool doesn't skate backwards. And as I'm driving, I'm driving in on the angle ever so slightly to create that dome. So the, the foot doesn't bottom out on the table and doesn't rock around. A little bit of a dance there, Keza. Gee, it's good to be back. It's so good to be back. Oh. Right. so that there, I'm just gonna clean that little bit up there. And then I come over here and then pull back. The reason I do that is because when it comes to sanding, I don't want to sand really aggressively with 120 or 180 grit right up into that tenon there. So we've done that now. Now we're going to shape up, shape up the back of the bowl. It's got a crack in it defect, but that's what we're going to do now. I switch gouges to the 45 degree wood cut, bring the banjo over on the angle, so the center of my tool rest is on the corner of that bowl. And now I'm gonna shape the bowl up. And I do that by a series of pull cuts and then a light push cut at the end to just get a really nice clean surface for sanding. Over grass grip and my tool's low. My right foot is front of my left and my left foot's back to, to, to balance myself. 
and then I start with that left wing and then remove the I remove the corner first. I don't come around and take one big swipe. You can, after a couple of hundred, you'll just... But just take that corner away, because we can all take it off fast, but we can't put it back on. And then I drive it up. I drive that tool up, like that. And that keeps... And then you just come around, keep refining that refining it around that bowl size. Turn the tool over and then do like a light little shear cut around. Just a nice little clean up. And that forms roughly the shape of our bowl. I'm not finished yet. This is to all speed up my process when it comes to sanding. So I'm just going to remove these light little tool marks there. So I've got the 45 degree uh, GL5 tool low and I'm just going to shear around, pulling the tool around, getting some nice light little shavings. And when I'm, when I'm cutting, I'm looking up the top of the bowl here. I'm looking up this side here for the shape. I'm not looking down here when I'm, when I'm doing it. I am at the start, but I'm, I'm, I'm watching for the shape. Tool, tool rest closer, ever so slightly. Handle out to my right. The flute is nearly facing me. I, I come in and open the flute. Swinging that tool handle around to my right hip. Getting some vibration there, turn the speed down. Too much, Kez. Come around, clean that, and then Make a little push cut up to the top. A little bit of housekeeping. And then, now I'm ready for sanding. There's two tools that I use on the outside of the bowl. So first up, I keep all my sandpaper in a compartment like this, and I wad punch the sandpaper out with the Glen Lucas wad punches. A lot easier than using steel rings and hitting it with a hammer. Trust me. So, wad punch the sandpaper out into three inch and uh, two inch discs like this. And I've got 120, 180, and then 240. This might be making you suck eggs a little bit, but never move more than 50% of your previous grit. And you wanna move in that order so you can remove the previous sand marks of that previous grit. So I start, this is a flexible three inch sanding head. It's by Wood Turners Wonders. They're online there. 120 grit, I pop that on. And pretty self-explanatory, I get the banjo out of the way. I'll explain, I'll explain this tool in a sec. And then I just work that bowl around to the side. I don't go near the tenon, just up and around. The bowl is spinning in reverse and the tool, the drill is spinning in the opposite direction, so. So the drill is spinning to my left, the bowl is spinning away from me. And then I swap grits to the 180 grit. Same thing, working it around, but not going too close to the tenon. Now I get my 240, same thing again. And then I come around and lightly touch the tenon and then go across the back with the 240 grit. And that's worked really well for me. If I find that I'm getting track marks like the railway lines around the bowl. So just quickly, the reason why I use these rotary sanders is because it leaves a lot cleaner finish on the bowl than the power head sanders. If I'm still finding that I'm getting track marks off the power head sander, these are looking a little bit secondhand too, I might need to replace the Velcro, but uh, they leave a lot cleaner finish on the bowl. This one here is by U-Butte Polishers here in Australia. They don't make them anymore, unfortunately, um, but Vicmark Tools make theirs still. And these are really cool because you can uh, also also put a vacuum connection in the back of that. You just plug your vacuum in and it draws the dust in through these little vents. I've made a full video about this. I'll link it at the end, the sanding video. Now I get the bowl, take it off, turn it around. And now I'll show you how I go about following how I do it. 
So we're ready to rock and roll. The first thing we're gonna do, because as we're pulling around, as we're pulling that tool around before doing the pull cut, we will rip material off the top. So first thing we wanna do is clean that top up and take that mortise down so it's a little bit safer. You'll see what I mean. Come back, make a clean cut. Like so. And I'm just gonna show you how I do this method here and then I'll show you that method after. Make sure we're cutting on center, obviously. Make sure we're cutting on center, a bit higher. Check again. There we go. I take the mortise, I take that mortise down. Like that. Start in the center. Slow that lathe down, it's probably a little bit loud. Keeping the tool in at my guts. I come in with the bevel facing in. So that's why my hand comes out there like that because the bevel is like this. So which way the bevel goes, the cut will follow. Very fancy. And then we come around like that, opening the tool as we come through. Not fully open, just to say like on a clock face, we come to about that two o'clock position, not, not three. We start at three and then we open to two, for example. Yes. Come in. That was annoying me. Now you might find this method doesn't work for you, but what I do, I go to the bottom, I find my depth. It might be a little bit counterintuitive. Just make sure your gouge is sharp as well. And now, see that I've left that bit of fat out here on the rim. I'm going to take, I do that deliberately to leave a bit of strength in the bowl. So I'm gonna start my last cut there to leave that rim, that's the finished rim. So tool out, push in, open up slightly. And then follow it down the bottom. A little bit more cleaner job on the bottom there. And that's the first way I go about doing it. Now, the second way, so that's just, and then I start sanding obviously. I'll show you how I sand in a sec. Where's that other bowly? The uh, next method that I wanna show you is the pyramid, the cone method, which looks like, like I said before, looks like that. That's what we're gonna do now. And the reason why you might wanna try this method is if you wanna go really thin, or you wanna keep that stability in the rim, you're having a bit of a tricky time uh, coring it or hollowing out your bowls, and then you're finding you're getting a lot of vibration or warping in your material. So this method here will help prevent, help prevent that instead of just hogging it all out like I did before. So bring this over, give this like a bit more of a clean air. Right. Back to the little half inch. Same thing again. We're going to clean up the face and then start. Hopefully that camera angle, hopefully that camera angle is a little bit better now. You can see a bit more clearly. Same thing again, where the bevel goes, the cut will follow. So hand out right. Take that mortise down. What happened then is I just, the tool touched the timber and it just skated away from me, so. And now I'm just gonna start, I remove a little bit, but then I keep that material in the center. So I keep that there. Can you see, I'm keeping it in the middle there. And it's sort of in, in steps, like a pyramid going up. I'm just gonna take a little bit more out. 
All right. Now this is where you can use two tools. One tool for hogging material out and the other tool that you keep razor sharp to make a really fine cuts going down if you're going really thin. And that'll also save time sanding in the end. Everything is a preparation for the next step. So I've got my little pyramid there. I'm just going to make that cut going down that wall uh, and I'll show you using another tool as well. So people that might want to try that. So I'm gonna, my rim, finished rim will be about there. I start back here, hopefully that camera can, yep. And I go in, open to two, and then come down, stop. Get my razor sharp tool, come back, and then just take a little bit. You don't need to take a lot. I'm gonna go my line. And then go to the next reel. Be careful when you go to the next reel, you might get a little catch on the wing of your tool. So just a word of caution. It's always nice to have extra tools as well. Now I'll just hog that out. Be careful you don't go too thin. I will need to make another cut there. That was very rough. Here's that. Nice little cut there. Now we'll start removing that uh, pyramid. Pyramid from the middle. More speed. So many ways of doing things. Now, You can use this tool all the way to the bottom, if you choose so. You can then also pick up a bottom bowl gouge, a 60 degree bottom bowl gouge. And then take that little stub off the end really gently and slowly. Now, now we're happy with that. And like I said before, I punch out two inch little discs. I start with a 120 grit. I don't go near the rim with the 120 grit. Turn that mask off, my apologies. I start here, lathe's running in reverse. Turning it right down. Lathe's running in reverse. The drill is running in the opposite direction. I then work the power head sander. I come around and then lightly go to the middle and then come back. I don't spend too much time in the middle because you will just bury that sanding head down into it. I then take that off, or just flick it off if you've only got one, and then put the next one, put the next one on. So 180 grit, come around, and then lightly go bang on the rim. So lightly just touch the rim, and then creates a really nice finish, because you've already got a really nice cut on the rim ready to go. So just working my way down, and then back up, but not going right out onto the rim from the inside. I stay away from it. Now, 180 off, 240 on, and then I work my way from the top of the rim down. This is probably the speed that I sand at. I can't give you an accurate measurement of it because my taco is, uh, it's not working. So I don't have the lathe spinning its head off because then you will get a lot of warping with the rim of your, your bowl due to the uh, inside being, being removed and it will just warp around. One way that I have alleviated the warping when I am sanding, it's got 240 grit on there. So as the lathe's running, I just lightly touch it like so. And what that does, it just maintains the strength on the outside of the bowl so it's not moving in and out with the speed of the lathe and I'm not forcing that head of the sander into it where it will then roll that, it could push the, the circumference of the bowl out and then change the shape of the rim and leave divots and things. Or one side really thin and one side really chunky. So that way I can just keep a nice even sort of width of rim all the way, down, all the way around. 
It's so awesome to be back. Thank you so much for your patience during all of this. I really appreciate it. Check that video out there about sanding and check that video out there about using the French polish or the friction polish method. Thank you all so much. Cheers. I'll talk to you all directly. Bye.